In this video, we'll go through start to finish how you can make carbon nanotubes in Blender. We'll start by deleting the default cube and adding in a cylinder. So shift A, add cylinder. Come down to this little menu right here and click the arrow. Make sure for the cap type that you have it set to nothing. Great. Left click on the screen and now grab your cylinder. I'm gonna hit one on my number pad to come into front view. And then I'm going to hit S and Z to scale and then five. So now I've scaled the cylinder up five times on the Z axis. I'll hit Control A and I will apply that scale. Great. Tab into edit mode and hit Control R. Scroll up on your mouse wheel until you have 50-ish cuts. The goal here is so that each of these looks roughly like a square. Perfect. So right click out of that and now hit Alt A to deselect everything. At this point, similar to my graphing tutorial and fullering tutorial, you need to have the tissue add-on enabled. So make sure you come down to preferences, add-ons, and search for tissue. Make sure this box is checked. And once that's done, go ahead and hit F3 or operator search. And we're going to look for this, convert to dual mesh. Go ahead and hit enter. And what you'll see is we now have these hexagons and they're a little warped. So the way that we're going to fix that warping so we have nice even hexagons is to come down to the modifier tab. We'll tab out of edit mode at this point, And we are going to add in a simple deform. We'll change the axis to Z and we'll leave both X and Y unchecked. Now for the angle here, this is going to be a matter of what you're going to try and do. But roughly what we're aiming for is about 300 degrees. And you can see that has brought these hexagons into a bit of a better alignment. So hiding the modifier and showing the modifier. The actual number that we're going to use is closer to about 283 degrees specifically. And you'll see why in just a second. So right away, I'm going to notice that these are a little bit longer than they are, are tall. And so the way I'm going to fix that is just by hitting S, Z, and then dragging down just a little bit until they look pretty even. I'm happy with that. Once you've done that, go ahead and make sure to apply the scale. That's going to impact some of the modifiers that we had later on. Now, if you are happy with this carbon nanotube the way it was, you could just use this. But if you would all wanted to scale it or make it longer, it can be quite a pain to actually go about scaling. If we just scale up, then it's going to become huge, but not any longer. If we tried our normal approach of hitting uh, shift Z, or hitting just Z rather, and dragging out, you'll see that now our hexagons are being stretched and we have no way of adding new ones. So the way that we're going to solve this is to come back in front view, hit tab, hit Z and drag into wireframe, one for vertices selection, and we're just gonna take this top set of vertices and we will delete those. We'll do the same on the bottom. So come down here, drag across, delete those vertices. And now back in solid view, what you see is we have this little ragged edge. We're going to put an array modifier right here. So the array modifier is adding an exact copy of this object and we're going to change it so it has a relative offset of one in the Z direction and zero in the X direction. Now that 283 degrees was actually so that these jagged edges would line up pretty much perfectly and they do. So what I'm going to do is click merge and that means that when this object gets close enough to this one, they'll essentially treat the vertice as the same point. And I'm gonna bring this value down to 0.994. Now I happen to know that works because I've done this before. But what you would see if it wasn't working was if it was too big, it would just pull apart. And if it was too small, it would go right through the mesh. So 0.994 is going to be pretty much right. There is a little bit of unavoidable warping that you're going to see right at that intersection, but that's usually not too much of a problem. If I now want, I can make this kind of as long as I want arbitrarily by just increasing the array modifier while maintaining that same aspect ratio. If I want to scale it up and have a bigger one, that's also no problem. I can now do that and the array modifier will allow me to maintain that length. So right now I'm gonna drag this array modifier back to just two and I'll hide it for now. Later on, we'll pair that with a curve so that you can actually see the results of our tube and how we can sort of shape these carbon nanotubes however we want now. So right away, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show that array modifier over there and add in a wireframe modifier. It's been very important throughout this process to apply the scale. And if you haven't, this is going to look kind of unusual. The edges will be sort of slanted. Some will be thicker than others. Also, the wireframe needs to stay below the simple deform. 
If it goes above simple deform, like I'm showing now, you can see now we have thicker edges here and thinner edges there. So for nice uniformity, keep the simple deform at the top of the stack. Also keep the array uh, above the wireframe. Finally, there's one thing that we also need to do with our wireframe, which is when we come down to this bottom, you can see that the bottom looks a little bit thinner and kind of ugly. So turn on boundary and that will just give us a nice uniform edge. If we want this to be a smooth carbon nanotube, same as we did in the graphene tutorial, we're going to come and grab a bevel modifier, change the segments to two. And because we're still using just the default wireframe thickness, we can again use a value of 0.005. Now you can see that that has created a better edge here. We'll grab this model, right click smooth. And now just like that, we have a reasonably good looking carbon nanotube. If we want, and I actually find this quite helpful for carbon nanotubes because you can see through and they can be a little bit difficult to visualize. In wireframe, you can uncheck replace original. Now you have that nice uniform hexagon lattice over top, but it's not visually distracting and you can actually see what's going on. So we'll go ahead and we'll throw a simple material on here. I'm just going to use something shiny and metallic in the material preview mode, and that looks half decent. If we wanted to, as I mentioned before, we can increase the number of counts on that array modifier. And while it catches up, which it will hopefully do, we have to actually be showing the array modifier. There we go, sorry for the wait. Now you can see we have a very nice, long, silvery carbon nanotube. So to add in just a little bit more visual interest on this one, what we're going to do is we're going to hide that bevel modifier because that's actually adding a lot of extra geometry and slowing everything down. And we're going to hit Shift A and we're going to add in a simple Bezier curve. I will hide our carbon nanotube for now, which I'm going to rename at the top carbon nanotube. And now you can see I have this simple little curve here. So in top view, I'm just going to hit E to edit it. And then just drawing something freestyle here, I'll hit E to extrude, Shift Z so I keep it in the XY plane. And I'll do that a few times to add some kind of interesting little curve to this. And we'll grab this one, G, Shift Z, uh, drag that over here, E, Shift Z this time to add another point. And we'll bring this one specifically over there and that one over here. Cool. So now we've got a nice little curve that we want our nanotube to follow. How are we going to do that? Well, we're going to add one more modifier and then that will call it for this tutorial. So we'll come to the modifier stack, add in a curve modifier. The curve that we will select is the Bezier curve that we just created. Now you can see it's pointed it towards the end and to make this follow the curve, all we need to do is hit choose Z for deformation axis. And now you can see, just like that, we have this nice carbon nanotube. It is following that curve. If your curve has points that are a little bit too steep in terms of how tight the turn is, it will squish your mesh and that can sometimes not look great. Usually this is a great example of stretching. And on the other side, let's see if we have that caving in. Yes, just a little bit. If you don't really want it to look like that, just go in and edit your curve a little bit so that it's a little bit cleaner. One last thing is choose the curve itself, come down to the object data properties and increase this resolution preview U up from 12 to maybe about, well, let's say 25. That usually just makes your curve a little bit smoother. It's adding a few extra points in there. So this nanotube is going to bend around it a little bit more cleanly. Now we could go to our camera view. All we're gonna do is we're just gonna drag ourselves inside this tube, hit Control Alt Zero on the number pad to bring our camera inside the tube. And now you can actually see we are inside this nanotube. So if we wanted to, we could render from here. And just like that, you have a visually interesting carbon nanotube, quick and easy. As always, thanks for coming out. If you at all enjoyed this tutorial, consider subscribing, sharing with your friends and colleagues, and have yourself a great old day.